review our meeting from December. And has everyone had a chance to take a look at the, the minutes that Jerry put together for us? Yep. And everyone has? Yeah, and the agenda says it is incorrect. <laughs> right. Well, that was sort of what I was going to say to you, Jerry, but... But that's okay. I'm glad. That's all right. Know. That was that was the board of selectmen meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you do a lot there, Jerry. So I, uh, you know. But I'll but, make uh, that correction. So if we make that correction, uh, is there any other um, comments or suggestions on the um, minutes that Jerry put together? And that, in that favor, I, I'll say all those in favor say aye. I agree. Aye. That's good. Aye. Okay. Nay, no. So we're all good with that. Um, the second thing on our agenda was Michael Burns uh, for personal property tax. Uh, Jerry, you put together some stuff that I believe you sent it to Michael Burns. Yeah. Um, and did he fill anything back out or do anything with that? Does no. anybody heard? No. No, he said uh, he was going to be on uh, join the meeting. Uh, maybe okay. he's having difficulty getting on. I don't know. All right. Um, he might show up later. Can we can we move forward off of that and then yep. come back to that? Yes. Okay. So let's let's move forward. And we'll go to number three on the list. And it was an educational resources and NRCS. Um, not quite. I sure wasn't what, quite sure what that was. I, I think that was Steve. Was that you going to put some stuff together for us? There no? was, um, you know, we had a little conversation near the end in terms of the, um, you know, how we want to communicate with the town and what information we want to offer. Andrew yeah. had mentioned the Climate Smart grant, and that she and I had both been on a sort of webinar for it. And the sort of question is, you know, do we want to be putting out notifications so that people are aware of the opportunities for funding that there are, um, you know, available to farmers in the area? So the NRCS offers a variety of programs. The State Department of Agriculture offers a variety of programs. Some of those are, you know, Grants that are deadline based, for example, the Climate Smart Ag grant is due next Wednesday. Um, and others have sort of rolling admissions. And so anyone can reach out to an NRCS agent uh, for various support, uh, you know, on their farm because they are, you know, soil uh, scientists and, and water scientists. That's, that's their concern. The NRCS is basically interested in soil and water conservation. Um, so. I think that what I recall is, you know, do we want to, you know, share that kind of information? Do we see ourselves as the Ag Commission, you know, sort of as a, whether it's a clearinghouse or just an information center to pass on? And then in what context do we want to do that? Um, so that? That's what I remember the conversation being. Um, so I'm not sure what more we wanted to discuss today or if just, if that's something we want to launch into. And, you know, since I have some experience with, with both those organizations and some other grants, I'm, I'm happy to try to put something together that might go out in a communication. So if we were going to put something together quarterly to go out into the paper from the Ag Commission, you know, I, I could try to put something together, you know, on the calendar that said, you know, this is what's available right now for the NRCS or the State Department of Ag, or here's the number of the local office, whether it's FSA or NRCS. Um, do I have that right? Maybe Andrew, is there anything else in there that we wanted to talk about or? You know, with regards to, no, I, I don't think there is. I'm happy to provide additional information about the Climate Smart Grant and some of NRCS's services. They, um, you know, they also like, like DOAG or at least DEEP does. They also provide some technical assistance to, um, you know, landowners, farmers, and woodlot owners. And sometimes, you know, forestry is considered a form of agriculture. So they, NRCS also provides services and actually cost sharing programs for non-commercial timber harvests on, on private, for, for private landowners. 
So there is a ton of support that those organizations provide as you uh, articulated well, Steve. Um, and so I think it's just deciding how or if, if slash how we want to get that information out there. Andrea, I, I would agree with you there. Um, I, I think we should put something out um, you know, at least once a year, maybe you know, when we start our meetings back in October or November, um, to give people just a little heads up of some of the, the you know, the areas where to direct themselves to look for mether, so they're looking for land or whatever they're looking for. Um, I've, I've gone to a lot of these conferences this winter. Um, I went up to Manchester, New Hampshire. I was up in Rocky Hill this past week. Um, and there's a lot of young people that are getting involved in farming, but they don't have a lot of capital resources to, to start up. And so they're looking to be able to lease properties or they're, they're trying ways to be able to get money. The state is very good. Um, just the state, people from the state spoke. And I, I was quite impressed on how the state's looking to try to help these young people grow their farms and grow, grow different things. And, you know, there's a lot of small farms out there, you know, five, six, seven acres. And then a couple of years later, they're at 12, 15 acres and they've grown quite a bit. So it was very interesting listening to a lot of those people. And I think if we set some type of example, like Steve said, maybe, you know, they start coming out like in the fall or something. And then maybe like after our second meeting, we can put something out in the, the paper or, or put it on our website. I think that would be the best thing. Don't we have like a little thing in the, the town that says agricultural commission and who's on the commission and stuff. And these are some like little blurbs that we can put in there, you know, dates to remember or something to that nature of what you need to look at and where to go at if you're looking for X, Y, or Z. I mean, that was something I was thinking of um, after talking with a lot of the young people this past week. Um, I thought it was very... Um, very informative. And I, I think the state's doing a better job of getting the word out to people too, as well. Um, and they do get back to you with a lot of questions. There, a lot of people at the state level too, were a lot, you know, they were, they were younger people. They weren't there. They haven't been around there like a long time. So they, they're sort of like, they want to get involved too. They want feedback from us. They want to know what's going on. And um, I thought that was great. I really did. I really thought that was going in the right direction for all of us here to listen to where people are coming from and what they're looking to do. And, and then talking to some of the um, people that were there, um, it was very interesting what they're doing. Was bringing, there was a lot of young 18, 19, 20-year-old people there that were really interested. So I, I, I thought that was good. That was a real positive um footprint to me to show that, you know, there's interest again, where uh, years ago, I, you know, 10 years ago, it wasn't that way. So um, I think as we go along on this, I think it would be a good idea, maybe Steve, maybe like next year, you know, because these grants are coming up now, but we can, when we start maybe October, November, we can put some important dates together and then we can put it in a, in our uh, ag commission of where to go. If that is something you're you're willing to help out with a little, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And Steve, I'd be happy to collaborate with you if that would be helpful um, when that time comes. You know, Chris, some of these, like as Steve mentioned, NRCF NRCF's services. Yeah. Yep. And some of those provided by DOAG are on a rolling basis. So there aren't necessarily like hard deadlines. Yeah. Um, whereas then, but then there are these other grant opportunities that just kind of come up um, mm. uh, like without, we might like, I don't know that we knew in October that we would have $7 million, well, really $14 million of potential grant funds through DOAG's Climate Smart grant. Um, I'm not quite sure when that was announced. Um, but, but so all of this is to say that we might not be able to capture everything at once. 
and um, because information kind of and grant funding opportunities develop over time, somewhat timed with the legislative sessions, but not always. And um, so I, I do think it's a great idea to have um, like that information on our website or a document uploaded with those kind of rolling basis opportunities, but then maybe when something like this climate smart opportunity arises, we can put something together, host an information session for townspeople or, um, you know, publish an article or, or something. Um, this is when I feel like it'd be helpful to have some type of listers or like email accounts of farmers in town or those interested in agriculture in town so that when we have um, time sensitive information, we can just kind of send out a blast email, FYI type of a thing. Um, but I don't think we have a database like that and I'm not quite sure how we would select one or develop one rather. Um, yeah, um, I will check with the assessor because she would know who everyone in town who has their property listed uh, for, uh, under farm, the farm status. So right under the PA 490. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I didn't know the farm uh, number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, Jerry, you probably don't need to, but um, that, do now. that was <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, um, though, though I'm not sure it would yield us contact information, um, um, but. Yeah, well, I think that's a start, check. Andrea. There that's are, a start. Yeah, sorry, Chris. We can, ahead, um, yeah, again, this sort of speaks to how big of a resource do we want to be or, you know, what our role right. is. We can point people. You know, to the New Connecticut Farmer Alliance listserv, which does exactly that, which sends out every you know grant opportunity and every sort of conference and workshop available. So you know, for people who are interested, we can you know remind people to sign up for that listserv and for the Yukon Extension listserv and for the FSA and NRCS listservs. Like these are the places that people should know. And mm -hmm. we, you know, as commission members, I want to be careful to not put too much on our plate here. So. Um, uh, of keeping people, you know, super up to date on these things, but these things, things are happening and that's what people's, you know, jobs are to make sure people know when they, these things come up. So, uh, I think if we can point to those resources, um, you know, a few times a year, I think that's a, a, a good role for us at least yeah. to start. Yeah. yeah and see where it takes us, you know. Steve, would you be willing to email Jerry a link to that website you just mentioned? And maybe, um, Jerry, if you'd be willing, you can just add it to our that link to our minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times people are actually checking our minutes, but if they do, <laughs> you know, they would have add access mm -hmm. in that format. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Christina, were you talking? Oh, yeah, I was just wondering, um, we were talking about adding things to the Agriculture Commission webpage on the town site. Um, Jerry or Chris or anyone, do do we know, are we able to add, uh, we could add a section for, um, you know, Connecticut listservs or um, technical assistance link? I mean. That that's kind of an easy, low hanging fruit sort of thing if we're allowed to add to that web page, Jerry. Well, that's what I'll find out. I don't okay. get involved with those pages, so and Betsy isn't here anymore, so I'll have. To, I don't even know who's doing it, so I'll have to find out, <laughs> and just what the policy or the protocols are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you, uh, Christine? Did you want to talk? Um, we talked about the grants and the resources since we're at it. Did you want to talk about the climate smart grant at all yourself? Uh, no, I, I don't have anything to add to what um, Andrea and Steve had kind of mentioned just as something coming up. I think that one was put in my name, but I'm, 
I, I don't think that I know as much as Andrea or Steve about that okay. um, grant. Okay. All right. Um, um, is there anything specific you want to know or or that you'd like to discuss in the context of these grants? I'm happy to provide a brief uh, overview of the information you know I have about it, but if there's something specific. Andrea, would you mind giving a brief overview on that? The, Absolutely. So, um, and Steve, please jump in here at any time if you have something to add or correct. Um, but I will, and I'm referencing an email um, I wrote to some staff members about this. So, if you see me looking away, that's why. Um, so, DOE Ag's Climate Smart Ag and Forestry Grant Program. Um, is a $14 million funding source um, broken into two separate pots of $7 million. Um, so there's so half of the monies um, for the Climate Smart grant um, are being allocated in this first round of applications, which as Steve mentioned, are due next week um, on January 18th. Um, so, for, so January 18th deadline involved the first $7 million pot of funds, which was put into DOAG's budget last session. So those funds are targeted to agricultural producers in a more classic sense. Um, many of these agro businesses or owners of those businesses also have woodlots, so some funds um, could be allocated towards implementing climate smart practices in woodlots as well, not just traditional farming. Um, but the program is DOAG's approach to this $7 million grant program is to issue big blocks of grants. Um, to conservation organizations or other or maybe bigger businesses. Um, but for the conservation organizations, they would then run an ex another uh, grant program um, and accept applications uh, to smaller pri uh, agro businesses or private landowners or organizations who would apply for smaller sums of money. Um, I'm pretty sure, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but like DOAG is hoping to issue grants no smaller than $100,000. Um, so, in that context, you know, an organization like Connecticut Land Conservation Council could get that big lump sum and then issue smaller grants out to land trusts or whoever wants to apply for less than $100,000. Um, the mission of this round of grants is to get climate smart practices on the ground. Like DOAG wants to see applications that will result in action, like a, um, and a implementation of climate smart agricultural or forestry practices. And um, they didn't, really issue details of what those are. To my understanding, their references that they're they're referencing climate smart practices as defined by NRCS. Um, and and um, I'd be happy to send like later look those up and email them to you. But there are things, you know, ranging from you know, updating your equipment um, to, you know, investing in practices, like as Steve said, with a primary focus in promoting soil health. Um, um, I don't know, Steve, if you have examples of some climate smart practices, but um, anyways, so it's unknown who will apply for the bulk funds and provide the subgrants and DOAG kind of put out limited information because I think they wanted to see 
who would apply, what the proposals were like, and kind of gauge it from there. Um, the second round of $7 million is being allocated differently. Um, rather than being written in to DOAG's budget, the money um, is, in a, is still needs to be released by the Bond Commission, and they have not yet been released by the Bond Commission. Um, and so it'll still be run through DOAG when it all comes to fruition, um, but it's less clear as to how that $7 million will be managed. And I think they're trying, they're waiting to see how this first round goes before kind of informing that. Um, so I don't think that second round will be clear until after the 18th, after this round is kind of processed. So Andrew, you're saying it's like a trial and error type thing? They're trying to see what they're bringing in and then how they can distribute it out? Um, yes and no. So, and I'm sorry if I was unclear. So I think they're waiting to see how this first round of $7 million, how the first half of the money um, is allocated, who applies, what type of proposals they are, um, and how that aligns with DOAG's goals of the grant um, before developing a framework uh, for applicants for the second round of $7 million. Okay. So is the, the intention of this grant is is it aimed at like larger production farms to like incentivize using less pesticides or something like that? Like what's the intention here? Um, ultimately, oh yeah, Steve, did yeah. you want to respond to that? Yeah, if you don't mind. So the, this grant right now is about um, getting training technical assistance from institutions to farmers. It's, it's less about like getting money to individual farms. Ultimately, the granting could go to, let's say, Yukon Extension to run a, a training program on soil health programs, on um, you know no-till practices and reduced till practices, and maybe purchasing equipment that can be shared amongst a group of farmers in a region. So a resource conservation district could purchase no-till equipment that, that gets shared between a group of farmers. So it, it's not like a, an individual farm is going to say, we're going to start doing these nice climate things and you're going to give us a bunch of money to do it. This is really about getting training assistance out there, technical assistance and coordinating projects that show these things that have a climate impact out there. Individual farms can apply for this grant, um, but there's, I think they're really looking to get this money out to other organizations that are then going to provide training and assistance uh, to, to farmers and, and land stewards of different kinds. So uh, yeah, and the small tier, that minimum tier that Andrew mentioned is $100,000 for a project that will happen you know, in a year to 18 months. And the top tier is a million dollars plus for a three to five year project. So, you know, they're gonna get a wide range of things. There, there is solar is included on this. So you could put solar on a barn. So if you had a large barn, you know, that could fit a hundred thousand dollars worth of panels, you might be able to, as an individual farm, apply for that. But they're not gonna let you build a new barn and put panels on it. That's, they're not paying for you to do that. Yes. And they're not paying for you to build, you know, a, a climate smart house on your farm. They wanna see, you know, these types of practices and they are as andrew mentioned they're using the nrcs definitions of climate smart practices which are pretty well articulated in the nrcs documents um but the department of ag is giving like that as a general guideline so as an applicant you're going to say the we're going to use these practices or we're going to train people on these practices and see if that they're being employed so that there's an impact in uh you know there's a there's a, a climate smart impact overall um so, and I think the, the next $7 million is all to be determined right now. The, you know, there's a deadline next week and grants will be determined and distributed by the spring or will begin in May. So, you know, if it's something you're interested in, there's, there's a week to get it done. Uh. <laughs> 
I have I have another question um, for Steve and Andrea. Um, I think thinking back to our meeting last month, and then from what I've read on the website, that municipalities are um, a possible mm -hmm. applicant as well. I think maybe it was sort of mentioned by you, Andrea, about you know that sort of thing. Do you do either of you have a sense of um, like, did they give examples of how a municipality might operationalize a climate smart thing, like New Haven doing urban farm climate smart things? Yep. Or like, are there are there any like flagship cases or anything? Well, this hasn't existed before, so there's not a previous thing to go on. Right. So this is brand new money, and like, okay, I was is, is reacting quickly, like so that they used as an example, or you know, like. Yeah. Something I don't know. They they did in their guidance. They used like directly as an example, like a municipality could purchase equipment for equipment sharing. So let's say okay, farmers in Woodbridge, or we could say Woodbridge Amity, you know, Wood you know, Amity, mm -hmm. say Woodbridge Orange Bethany. We could say we want to pilot a, a equipment sharing program for you know a, a no till seed drill, you know. Mm -hmm. so that we might then say, we, you know, we get together people from the agricultural commissions or the agricultural community of these towns and say, this is of interest. Here's why it's of interest. Here's why it's climate smart. This piece of equipment costs this much dollars. We'll need a trailer to put it on and we'll need to spend, you know, these monies for coordinating a program and for information about it. And if that met the sort of, in this case, that example would be like probably the lowest tier threshold, you know, that might be a competitive application. So that sounds the, like the kind of thing that maybe is worth our time as an agriculture commission. Um, maybe even to have like a sub conversation. I don't know if we're allowed to, I, I don't think we're like, we can have subcommittees, but um, is there a way for us, not necessarily, uh, obviously not for next week's grant funding, but not even for this year's um, funding, but to if we can keep it our eye on the pulse of this type of thing um to talk like could we ho host a meeting where we talk about this and invite people possibly from amity um or is that like i guess how could we as a commission think about working with our municipality to benefit farmers in a climate smart way um because that seems where it would fit in Great for us. Great question. It's a great question. I don't know if Jerry has guidance, but like I would imagine we'd have to talk to the Board of Selectmen to get their support. Um, and so maybe the first way to start would be attend, you know, attending one of their meetings, getting on their agenda uh, to bring this to their attention. Um, and put some type of proposal together. I don't know what would come first, talking to Aunt, like. I think yeah. talking here would come first. Like, so if in okay. this meeting we were deciding, yes, we want to do this, we would end up with sort of a proposal within our commission that then we would advise the town on. So then we would sort of bring that to the town to say, we'd like to, you know, on behalf of the commission and the town apply for this grant and we would need their approval. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it would go, but we'd want to decide here what it is to bring to the board of selectmen. I agree with you there, Steve. We would have to vote on it and have a thing, and then we'd have to go to the next step, like you said, bring it to the town, bring it to the selectmen, and see how they would want us to, you know, would they let us proceed? Do you know what I mean? We can't just go ahead and, you know, run rampant. We'd have to right. do it that way. Um, so, I mean, it's like you said, there's only a week left for this type of grant. But I think that's something down the line here. We got to keep our eyes open to, and then we can maybe try to move forward on something like this because we don't really know which direction they're going to go in. We're talking right now from a hundred thousand to a million, but basically, as Steve says, they're looking to get into some of these other programs so they educate other people more. That's what it sounded like to me, Steve. Like they're trying to educate us on how to move forward and how to do this. So. I think, you know, we're pretty much out of this round, but I think the next round, I think we should really look at that and go to the town and and uh, see see where this where the, see where they went with the first round of the seven million dollars. I think that's a big indicator of where we need to look at, um, you know, maybe, you know, you, you might have other ideas as well. So um, I, I think that's and, something. And we, Chris, yeah. 
in that yeah. context, just to add, like, yes, we don't have the time to submit a proposal for a hundred thousand to a million directly to DOAG, but following the 18th, we do know that there will be these organizations that are issuing smaller sub grants. Um, and so that doesn't mean that we're out of an op that we totally miss an opportunity. Like once we know who those grants were awarded to, um, we slash the town could potentially apply to one of the organizations who is now that now will be issuing a sub grant program. Um, we could also wait for the next seven million dollar pot to be, you know, defined and active. Um, but this is one of those situations where, um, yes, we need more information, but also I would hate for us not be proactive about it because um, deadlines creep up and and if it involves getting the town support, like that takes a lot of time and back and forth. And I just want to make sure we would give ourselves um, the time uh, to work at the pace of the municipality, of, of, of the board and potentially neighboring towns boards um, to put a decent proposal together. I, I think Andrea, you make a make a good point there, but let's see where that seven million goes, the first seven million. Um, and then, you know what, we can keep tabs on it on a monthly meeting, just put it on the agenda saying, has anybody, you know, has anybody read or any seen anything more? And then that keeps us, gives us tabs. If somebody says, yeah, you know, by the way, this is what's going to happen on the, the 15th of this month or whatever it is, we need to look and see where it's going. Then we can create what we need to do of how we need to then go to the board of selectmen and make them, you know, as a group here say, hey, look, this is what we need to do so we can go to the Board of Selectmen and then tell them, look, we've been keeping an eye on this. we got to, you know, this is what we're looking to try to do. And then we'd like to share this information with other towns to help form a group together. So I, I think that's a just something we need, just need to keep this on the radar. I think it's very important that you keep it on the radar as we go along and then see, see how it pans out, see where it starts going. And then we can... Like you said, we need more information. So every month we'd get a little more information. If we don't see anything, we don't see anything next month, but we might see something the following month. So I think that's the the way we should attack this at this point we're in right now, if if everyone's good with that. Yeah, well, can I offer, I think maybe yeah. what part of what Andrea is getting at is just being prepared for opportunities when they come yeah. up. And yeah. so, you know, I think one of the, the things Andrew suggested in the past is putting together, you know, whether it's a list of goals, things that we want to accomplish as a commission. So, and if we start thinking about that in the context of, uh, you know, what funding we might need to accomplish something, mm -hmm. if, we, if we flesh that out at a future meeting, like if that were part of a February or March meeting, here are, yeah. you know, uh, beginning, you know, brainstorm of short-term goals or long-term goals or things we might want to ask funding for. Yeah. Now we have that set aside. And then as we're keeping our eye on grants, we can say, you know what, this might be applicable here. Yeah. Um, or we see that this funding has been awarded to another group who might be regranting or offering training or support that then we could take advantage of. So, you know, we, we, we don't necessarily have to be just reactive to the grants um, as they're offered. If, if we're, you know, you know, if we have some goals laid out, we can then be proactive and we might be prepared, uh, you know, as something comes up. Is that, so do you think, do yeah, I, I, think that I have that right, Andrea, that's sort of what you were getting at? Yeah, Steve, thank you for that articulation. I appreciate it. So then do you want us in the February meeting, set some goals out and then maybe try to get to a March meeting for the Board of Selectmen and just tell them these are some of our goals. This is looking what we're trying to do down the line. So at least they got a something like they're they're listening to us. They know we're on, you know, we're coming to them and telling them what we're doing. Does that does that work with everyone? We could set some goals. Andrea, Steve, you know, what do you think? Yeah. I don't know if we need to set something up with the Board of Selectmen yet. I think we just some preliminary work on our 
part okay. would be useful for us as a commission anyway, and yeah. then just puts us in position to respond to opportunities as they come up. Okay. Um, I don't that, that, you know. That sounds it's that just works. Start getting the stuff out there. How how do we have the conversation about what we want to do? Yeah. What are yeah. the opportunities? Identifying needs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. We're talking about some of these grants. I went back to some of the ag commissions throughout the state, and I read some of their minutes. I don't know if you guys have done that, but I read some of their minutes just to get an idea what they're coming from. And and you know, they're so different. Every town is so different from the next town. So. You know, um, I I just think that's a, I like the way you put it, Steve. It's a good way to, to start something and we can always build on that. Thank you. Um, is there anything else anybody would like to talk about on that? Well, let's move forward. Um, Andrea, you did the, uh, let's see. Andrea's outreach article, the frequency and the content. Um, you there, Andrea? Yeah, I'm. I'm here. Okay, I'm not. Okay. I, I just didn't really understand what that meant. Um, are, were we going to decide how frequent we should po post something in Woodbridge Town News? Yeah, I I think we should do something in the fall and in the spring. I don't know what you guys think, but I think in the fall is a good time. People are getting near the end of the year. We talk about, you know, what, what we've accomplished this year, what's going on. And then, you know, over the winter, you know, we, you can talk about, we've talked about some grants tonight, but you can talk about some of the, some, something new that's come, come about, which it could be anything that could consist of anything. Um, and I, and I think a couple times a year would be a good, um, just a good message to the people of you know what these are some of the things if if people have some type of comment or input they can get back to Jerry Shaw and we can move forward with that. Um, I think it's important that you know we just reach out to people, tell them what you know these are some of the things that we're looking at. This is what we're we're trying to move forward because they're not going to sit and listen to our meetings and stuff. But if you got it out in the paper and said, hey, look, you know the ag commission will be meeting on. And we'll have all our dates for the year. These are our dates. This is what's going on. Because um, some of the people, you know, I, I don't know if everyone has a computer. But I mean, most people do, but you know, some people don't. And they want they might not be able to get onto the meetings, but at least they have something to read. And they could always call Jerry Shaw at the office and, and get some information from her. And she could always mail it out to him, whatever, you know. There is some old people like that that just, oh, they're not tech savvy. I'm sorry, but they're just not. And and I think that's it gives them an opportunity. But if they see something a couple times of the year out of the year, I think that gives them an opportunity uh, to look at something like that. Um, what what are your you know? Does anybody else have any comments on that? I I think beginning of the farming season and end of the farming season to you know at least publish something and make our presence known and sort of show what our intentions are or, or uh, maybe even in the article point to the resources that Steve was talking about earlier. Um, I'd, it'd be good for us just to, you know, have a presence. And I, I think that schedule you're talking about makes a lot of sense for the Ag Commission is beginning of the farming season, end of the farming season. Yeah, and we could reach out you know, we talked about next meeting, we can put some things on the agenda, what we'd like to get out. So maybe like in March, we can get out these to the people of this is what's going on. These are some of our agendas for this coming year. And, and they can reach out to us. Um, and um, I, I think that's important. Um, and at the end of the year, when we start, you know, we start, you know, at the end of the year, um, we can talk a little about what's, you know, these are the meetings coming up for this coming year. This is what, you know, some of the, the thought process is. And just like Steve said, you know, bring, get some stuff out there and let's get our, start trying to put some, um, you know, basically what we're, what we're trying to accomplish or what we're trying to look at the coming year and things along the way, they change as they go along. So, um, 
I, I feel that that's something we should start working on maybe at the next meeting and we can put, outline a few of the things we need to put on for um, the coming year. Um, anybody's thoughts on that? Does that like start like next meeting and then we put something out like in March? Because in April, um, we, we've we set up already or we've, we had discussion with the uh, Jerry of having the uh, selectmen come and, you know, walk the, uh, some of the properties, you know, on the, I think it was the 22nd of April. Um, so, you know, we can talk about that. You know, it's also the, the people, you know, they should, you know, they should have the opportunity too. you know, for, for walking it with the selectmen, maybe they want to come down with the selectmen and walk it with them. You know, that's something that, you know, maybe we want to reach out to them as well, just to show them what's going on and the stewardship with that we have. And the, you know, we have a lot of mutual good faith between, you know, town and, and each farmer or, or all of us. So, you know, there's a lot of good faith there that you have to keep that good faith. And also with the townspeople, you want to show them that, look, we're doing something. We're making the land look better. We're making it look nice. Because, you, you know, some of these people just think, of, oh, you're just giving them this or you're giving them that. You got to sort of show them what's happening because some people don't understand. Um, so that was that was I think would be a good start to you know for our next meeting is to put some of those things together and and we can discuss them to get them into something in March. Um, how about you? Would can we move on from here? Or does anybody else have anything else to say? We good? Um, I I just will add quickly that. I'm happy to do something when we start our meetings, yeah. sharing the dates, and then at the end of the season, as you guys, as you all mentioned. But um, I don't think we need to limit ourselves to only two. If there are special events, if we're hosting information sessions, if we have news to share, you know, we could put out articles accordingly. You know. Okay. Um, so, I, I'm that's good a primary that. form of communication. You know, I think that's something we'll talk about a little bit more next month. Yeah, um, yeah, like in our goals. Um, but yeah, so I I just throw it out there. If there's anything you any of you feel like we should be relaying to the public, make it known, and we um, can draft some language to go to print. That sounds good. Um, I think we'll move forward. I think if everyone's good with that, we can move forward. Um, and we're talking again about the leasing of the public properties. I've reached out to a bunch of towns. Like I said, I've gone north. I've gone as far as Colchester out that way. Um, I, I even went on the their their websites to try to get some ideas of where they're at with some of this uh, stuff. I did find a lot of information through the state, through um, UConn and, and the sources there. Um, and I think one of the things is I'd like to come back to this next meeting because I think I'll have more information back to me where I think it would help us more. Because I asked them more for could I get an idea of what your, your contracts are or your policies are from town to town. And everybody's different. Um, they use the template basically coming from the state of Connecticut. They they follow that. But some of them, you know, some of these um, with the state, you know, the state will go out 10 years with some of the their properties, the state. Not, I didn't say towns, the state. The state gives up. So I think I'd like to get a little more information on that. Um, and, and when I get more information there, I think I could, you know, bring it to us and show, you know, have Jerry you know, give it to us in a, a format so we could see what's going on. And um, and if we could put something together and we get a long-term something to be able to move forward to go to the selectmen or even the, our rep from the board of selectmen, maybe we can invite him to one of our meetings and share it with him so he could go back to the selectmen. So that's something I mean, where I'm at. Isn't he supposed to be here now at so, every meeting or no? Yeah. Well, they, uh, yes, but he had a yeah. commitment that he couldn't change. So, 
I mean, so sometimes so what he will do what will happen is this meeting's being recorded. It will be sent to him and he will watch it. So I was just seeking clarification because um, Chrissy said invite him, but I think it's standard, right? Yes, for it's standard that for he him. should be here. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's so ultimately, Chris, you're, well, I'm just so ultimately, have we hit a dead end? Is that what I'm? Well, I, I, I don't know if we've hit a dead end. I know, you know, just talking to Orange, you know, talking to Jimmy Zioli, you know, they're going to go out one year. You know, that's it. Bottom line, they're going out year to year. Um, yeah. he said somebody gave them uh, a proposition to come to them for multiple years, like five years or 10 years or something like that. He would have to go back to their board of selectmen and then they would have to bring it, follow it up through that way uh, to see if they wanted to do something like that. That has not been presented to them. So, but he said, you know, we always negotiate in good faith and always try to keep, you know, the people in orange, keep them, you know, if they're farming the property and they're doing a good job and they're good stewards of the land. He said, we always try to keep them there. Um, you know, yeah. and then Woodbridge has a slightly different relationship with its farmers. And oh, I, I, not, I, I, like, I, so I don't know that we have as much um, of that. But did he speak to, for farmers who are trying to take advantage of grants like Christina was that require longer leases like has anyone did, know, has the precedent yeah he has not had that brought up to him that like okay. Christina did so he couldn't speak on it because it, it has not happened to him so um you know, where we're, we were different and you're right there. We are different. We're trying to, you know, Christina's trying to better the land and try to make something better. Um, and that's a, that's a benefit to all of us. Um, but just talking with Jimmy that way, no, he, he hadn't. And um, I will, that's why I reached out to some of these other towns. I reached out to North Brantford. I reached out to some of these people. And, and that's one of the questions I did, Andrea ask, I said, you know, if, we're looking like a long-term type project. Where are they at? How the, how do you go through the towns? Are they are they going through a process like we're going? Does the town say, look, this is what we do? And so, you know, they don't meet like, you know, well, we meet monthly. They meet so many times a year, but a lot of people get busy with holiday times and stuff like that. And they don't get back to you right away. So it takes time. And I don't want to be hounding somebody, calling them every day, saying, hey, look, this is that. You know, they're volunteering yeah. their time, just like we all are. So I sort of like, I just like, okay, when I get the information, I'll I'll bring it along and pass it on to everybody. So, um, so we just, you know, I can, when I get something, I'll bring it to Jerry and say, look, you know, this is something we need to, you know, bring up at the next meeting, or we need to bring it up at this meeting or that meeting. I think it's valuable information that we should share with everyone. And then, you know, we can discuss it. And if something comes up, we can say, hey, look, this would be something we really look, the board of selectmen or somebody need to, you know, or our rep, this is what's going on. So he could bring it forward for us and, and we can bring it up for discussion. And he might have questions or people have questions for him. And, and I think that would help us a lot. Yeah, I had a, right. a few um slight uh leads yeah uh, i talked to my nrcs agent uh diane and she uh gave me two towns the names of two towns who do have longer leases mm -hmm. the lebanon uh lebanon has three-year leases in general for their farmers mm -hmm. two examples i think of of longer than that and i haven't been mm -hmm. able to in touch with anyone there, I think three years is not exactly what we're looking for anyway, but it might be interesting to see how that's written. Um, so I can look at that. And then 
Wallingford has five-year leases, I have been told. I've been trying to get in touch with someone from the town of Wallingford. Erin O'Hare is in the planning department, and she's apparently the contact that I need to get a hold of. I've called her office, but again, like you were saying, Chris, I mean, I can ask for information, but um, I haven't heard back yet. So um, then Diane Blaze from the NRCS, she did say that she may have copies of um, leases from town leased land um, that the State Department of Agriculture did on properties that she could redact. So I don't know if that's um, State Department of Ag land or municipality land, but she knows that we're talking about a town here. Um, and those are tenure leases, but even being able to see a few different write-ups, I think that what we're talking about, just being able to give some language to the town, things they might consider or not consider if we were to go forward with this. So I'll follow up with the town of Wallingford and also um, Diane, and hopefully we could get a couple of um, uh, either generic, you know, templates that they mm -hmm. use or um, redacted you know, if there's personal information that they don't want, you know, specific properties shared or something, um, those things might be helpful. So um, maybe, I guess, if we keep this one sort of on the back burner or on the yeah. agenda. I, I, I agree with you, Christina, because I think every month could be a different thing. Once we get some information or more information, that gives us some more, you know, educates us more of how we can go move forward with some of this stuff. Um, <laughs> I mean, it would be nice, but I, I know a lot of the, the state does do 10 years. I do know that. Um, the municipalities have a hard time with going out long term, believe me, um, just from yeah. what I've I think, seen and read. But that's that's encouraging. It's nice to know, like, Wallingford is, is a neighbor. You know, it's close yeah. to us. So that's a nice example if we can get that information. Um, yeah. So, so thank you both for contacting these people and organizations and for continuing to get some more specific information. That's, yes. that's great. Um, so moving forward with that, um, Jerry, we got to file out our 2023 meeting dates uh, with the town clerk. So. I don't have a calendar with me, and I know you, these were the dates you gave us. Were they all the second Tuesday of the month, just like we've normally been doing and everything, Jerry? Uh, yes. No, I think February, uh, we were the 21st. All right, that date has already been filed. It was oh. just that, you see, for the town clerk by state statute, you have to file the calendar year from January to December. Because you break for the summer um, when you started out deciding on your dates, you were breaking um, them up into two sections. So what she wants is the rest of this year, 2023. Which okay. would be that February you had you changed February date. I know that to the twenty first, right? Yeah, because you didn't want to meet on Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. So, which is so, about a Leland, I think. <laughs> okay. So, um, if all those are good, all those in favor, and I'll make a motion that we use those dates. And um, I'll make a motion for that. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. None. So we're unanimous on that, Jerry. Okay. Um, and then our just I just want to catch up. Did Michael Burns try to sign on at all? No. Okay. So we're pushing nine o'clock. So we're an hour there. So. Mm -hmm. um, we had the last thing we had on the uh, agenda was for the jumping worms pump, public info session update. Um, is there anything more on that? I think um, 
think it was, was it Andrea or Steve had some type of um, information that you could um, you put out? Did I didn't see anything. Was there anything on that, Jerry, or no? No, I didn't see anything. And also, mm -hmm. I've not heard anything from anyone about collaboration on the public info session, which is supposed okay. to be in March. Yeah. Yeah. Did we pick a? I have to look back at the minutes now. Did we pick a date, or where did we leave off with all that? Uh, yeah, they picked. Um, let's see. Tim seems to be the conservation commission seems to be the driving force on this. Right. And uh, they said March was a good time, but they didn't pick an actual date. I think I. March 14th sticks in my mind, but that might be for something else. <laughs> okay, so I see in our minutes that the commission agreed. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is a conservation commission or the ag commission, but to invite either Anna Dobson or Mrs. Sullivan. It was it was your commission. Okay to our January or February meeting. So yes. obviously we did not do that for this meeting. No. Um, <laughs> we weren't so able maybe to maybe that's what that um maybe that's what that agenda line was for. So Jerry, let's put a let's put it out to them for February. Yep. Um either one of them to ask if they would like to join us so we could have an informational session um on that for our, our february meeting okay and if yeah, we get um, you want me to try to get in touch with um gail ridge uh from the department of Ep epidemiology at the connecticut ag station yeah i i, I would yeah or Aunt, or why not anna though um, I have no contact information on her. If someone can give oh, me some. I do have Anna's contact information. Great. Um, okay. I will email that to you, Jerry, or Great. how would you like me to proceed? Okay. Okay. And then we'll see, you know, if they come on to join us, we can put them on our February meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, share that I, I know that there's going to be a jumping worms presentation at the um, uh, NOFA winter conference. I don't know the time, but uh, if it's a virtual presentation, it'll be one of the days, Monday through Friday, um, March uh, 6 through 10. The in person conference is on the 11th uh, at Wesleyan University. So that's Saturday, March 11th. So I think we're still working out the details of which presentations, which workshops are going when. Yeah, but I, that one might end up being virtual, which means, you know, anyone can go at the time and it might also end up being available as a recorded session that we can refer back to. That, that Okay, Steve. When we know more at the next meeting, we should. Yeah. Have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that concludes our agenda for this evening. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Anybody? Do you want to make up a list for the next meeting? Um, or do you just want? Why don't I try to put together something yeah. that you've talked about on this and I'll send it to all of you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you right. It'll be good. And then I'll second it. All those in favor for adjournment? Aye. 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 Okay. They're all good, Jerry. No nays. <laughs> you can go home. I wonder Jerry. why. <laughs> Thank okay. you, everyone. We'll see you next month. Thank Appreciate you. all your time. Good night.